Hi guys, and welcome to day five of my seven day loose floral challenge. This is a free seven day challenge that's gonna teach you everything you need to know about painting loose florals in watercolor. There'll be a new video every day on my YouTube, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any. Now you can either paint along with us every day for the seven days, or you can do it at your own pace, whichever you like. You can also join our free Facebook group to share your progress and any of your loose floral work. We'd love to see what you create. For day five, we are going to be painting Cosmos flowers. Now I've chosen these for a few reasons. First of all, they have amazing leaves with really frilly detail, which I love. Secondly, they're pink, which I also love. And thirdly, they're one of our flowers for July for seasonal floral challenge, which you can take part in on Instagram. In day five, we'll be building on some of the things that we've already learned in the previous four days, but we'll also be adding three new techniques. So first of all, we're going to look at foreshortening of perspective. That's how to create flowers from the front view and from the side view in different angles. Secondly, we're going to look at how to create composition with multiple flowers in the same piece. And thirdly, we're going to look at how to fill space using leaves to just bring the whole piece together. All right, let's get painting. guys I'm ready to start painting now we're using the same supplies as always so Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press by Legion Paper, Cotton, Windsor & Newton Professional Paints and Princeton Heritage 4050 round brushes. So today we're going to be looking at um, perspective and foreshortening and adding leaf details so the perfect one for this is Cosmos Flowers um, they're also part of the seasonal floral challenge prompts if you're doing that with me as well. So foreshortening is essentially um, painting a flower on its side so that you see kind of the edge of the petal that is closest to you rather than kind of the full shape of the petal. So that's one of the things we're going to be looking at how to do today. So I'm going to use my size five for this just because the smaller brush gives you a bit more control. So we're going to start with um, a cadmium yellow and a yellow ochre for the centres. You can see that I have a tendency to mix colours all together on the palette. Um, if you're a bit of a neat freak and you don't like that, you can just rinse the brush off and then pick the other colours up. But I'm not a perfectionist, so happy to mix them all together. I've decided actually that's a bit brown and I'm going to go for an orange instead. So this is a cadmium orange. So this is to paint the centre, so we're going to use the same technique that we used with the daisies in lesson one. So we're going to tap to create a little centre with the dot stroke. And I'm going to do this one on an angle here. So we imagine that it's a round centre and we tip it and it becomes an oval. I'm going to rinse that off and then mix up um, an opera rose and a bit of purple. Cosmos flowers are pink but opera rose is um, a little bit neon so I like to mix it up with other colours. I'm going to use quite a light value of that. So for the petals at the top we're going to pull kind of normal petals up. So I'm pulling these up. What I'm actually doing with these because they have rounded tips is doing a loop stroke. So we're going to kind of come up there and then do a loop over the top and come back around. I'm going to leave a little bit of white space in some of these as well. Remember all the things we talked about allowing them to touch in little places but not kind of touching them so close that they just become one blob. And I'm not touching these to the centres too much so I don't want the yellow to get all muddy in there. We're changing up the value, the colour, mix. Okay, so when we get to side petals, what we want to do is create one that's kind of the same length, but a lot thinner to imagine we're looking at it from the side. So it starts to look like that. Can you see how that's just a bit thinner? And then when we get to the front petals, we're going to want them to look shorter and flatter. So it's a bit too dark. I'm just gonna pull that around there. So you see shorter and the idea is that it's actually kind of tilted and we're only seeing part of the petal. And then for the very front one, we just want something that looks like a kind of oval. We've got some nice bleeds going on in there. 
and this is essentially foreshortening four flowers. So we're imagining that the flower is kind of tipped slightly away from us and these petals at the front here are just tipped away so we're only seeing the edges of them rather than the full length of the petals. With that first one done we're going to go back to our mix for the centres and we're going to do another one down here. Same sort of thing and for this one I'm going to use a bit of a lighter pink value. So start with the back ones and pull them around in a loop. I, Cosmos flowers have kind of jagged tops so I'm going to try and get that characteristic in there. And then we start to get to the side ones and they get a bit thinner. You'll see with all of these petals that we're just bringing them back to the centre to make sure that they're attached to the flower at the centre. Now what I'm going to do is add some slightly darker values in there. Now this helps create a shadow around the centre, which is really good when you're trying to do perspective as well. Okay, and then back to the front ones, so these are a bit shorter. And then we have one that's more of a kind of oval shape right there. I'm going to use some little um, flicking details there and just connect to the yellow in a few spaces just for a bit of colour variation. There we go. Okay, I'm going to create a couple more, I think. I'm going to do a regular one over here. It helps to have some flowers that are facing the front and kind of a full circle and some that are tipped away because that's how they would sit um, in nature. Now I know we're not trying to create the exact way that flowers look when we paint loose, um, but we are trying to kind of mimic enough of how they appear in nature to make sure that it does look like flowers and that they don't look kind of cartoonish. You can see, I mean we talked in the first um, day about kind of speeding up when you want to paint loose. You can see that I'm uh, going fairly quickly with this. It's just helping me uh, make sure that I'm keeping to my loose style. And then we're going to add a darker few details there around the center. You can also do it to the outside edges. If you notice this is spreading too far, you can also go back in and just pick it up a little bit. Cadmium is so uh, so dense as a pigment that it does have a tendency to spread pretty far. I'm going to do a couple more, so I'm going to do one down here um, and then kind of an upside down one at the bottom. Back to our center. I love the way this scratches on the paper. So a lot of you guys get in touch with me to ask about floral composition and how to do it. Um, and the truth is it's, it can be quite a complicated um, subject. And the main reason for that is that um, there are just quite a lot of compositional rules. Um, it helps with loose florals to mimic some of the composition that you would use in kind of lifelike botanical drawing. Um, but generally, with a composition rule, you want an odd number of items. So for this one, we're going to do five flowers. Um, in day one, we did three. Um, because composition looks better when it's odd numbers rather than even numbers. Um, what we're aiming for is not to have any symmetry. So you'll see that I'm putting them all at diagonals from each other. And that's basically the best way to think about composition is just about odd numbers and diagonals. Add a bit more pinkness in there, it's starting to get a bit purple. Okay, and then we are going to do the last one. 
um, and it's basically going to be like these but upside down. The other thing um, that you can do when you're practicing loose florals that I found really helpful is sticking to a really simple colour scheme like this um, so that you don't have too much energy spent on mixing colours. Um, you can even go simpler than this. I really like monochrome florals um, when you're practicing of just choosing one colour. So say it's blue and you paint everything in blue. The flowers, the centres, the leaves, everything. Um, it has a lot of really good benefits. So it means that you can focus on kind of shape and composition and your brush strokes um, without having to kind of spend time mixing colours and worrying about colours. Um, it also gets you to stop thinking about doing it too lifelike um, because when everything's blue it doesn't need to be perfect and it kind of seems to overrule that part of our brain that wants to make it all perfect. Um, so that's really good and the other thing it helps with is um, focusing on value so really changing up kind of whether everything is too dark or too light so you can start to focus on contrast um, and that makes a big difference for your floral paintings. There we go. You see I went back in there and picked up um, some of that colour because it was all starting to get a bit samey and I like to keep the contrast high. I've also allowed it to touch there. It's almost like that leaf is kind of tucked under, uh, that petal, sorry, is tucked under the other one. I really like that effect. Create some nice jagged edges there. And then I think for the flowers, that is us done. Okay, so looking in at the composition, we can see that we've got things going in a diagonal. Now, this is the simplest way to create loose floral composition. And then what we're going to do is fill in some of the gaps with leaves. Now, cosmos leaves are some of my favourites to paint because they're kind of really wispy and intricate and they look really detailed, but they're actually really easy to do in a loose style. So we're going to use um, our sap green again. I'm probably going to add a bit of lemon yellow deep to this to just keep it really yellowy because all of the colours in here are quite warm. And it helps to do that with the green as well. You'll see I have in my palette um, lemon yellow is in there twice. So this one I use for mixing warm colours and this one for mixing with greens and blues to create cool colours. Right, we're going to get a nice watery mix. And then what we're going to do with this is just wiggle and flick the brush about. So I'm going to start over here and then pull out a bit of a stem. I'm going to tap some of this colour off and then just start flicking the brush about to create the little wispy leaves. Now, as before, I'm not necessarily starting the leaves from the same point on the stem so that they don't look too symmetrical. I'm going to go back in and dot in some slightly darker tones in there and allow them to spread as well. So we never want to be painting everything in the same value or darkness. Now all I'm doing is holding the brush vertically and kind of flicking it out in any direction. There we go. We'll come back in with a bit of pure sap green to create the contrast there. Going to do the same thing here. I'm going to drag down a little bit of a stem and then start flicking those wispy little leaves out. This is a really great tactic if you want to kind of practice your loose strokes. It's just about getting expressive with it. It means lifting your hand up off the table, um, you know, not resting your arm, not relying on anything to kind of prop you up, and you just don't get to fuss about the details. You just allow the brush to go in its own direction and what you end up with is kind of unpredictable and not really under your control but it's just a way that works really well to create loose strokes. Put too much water on there. You see that I'm not overthinking this, I'm just kind of flicking and doing or filling the space. I'm 
I'm also going to allow it to touch some of those little wet petals as well there. Don't forget about your contrast. I'm going to go back in and just create some areas that are a bit darker. See, all of that one starts to look a bit like it's the same value. There we go. And you can see we're just filling in the space here, so we're not worrying about um, making anything perfect. We're just having fun, flicking everything about, making art. Another um, really great loose floral tip if you are struggling, especially with larger compositions, is to use a smaller piece of paper. I mean, this pad is a 10 by 7 inch, um, so it's slightly smaller than my usual 9 by 12. Um, the main reason I've done that is to make the videos a bit shorter um, so you don't get bored. Um, but I also really like to paint on this size format because somehow smaller paper just seems less daunting. You know, you don't have so much space to fill in. It just seems a bit more doable. So if you are struggling or you're kind of, you're faced with a bit of a blank sheet of paper and you don't know what to put on it, I really recommend um, choosing smaller formats or cutting it into smaller pieces. Um, it's a really great tip to kind of take some of the pressure off. And it also means that if it doesn't turn out the way you like, you can just kind of, it's just a small piece of paper. It's not a big deal. You know, if you've used a whole watercolor sheet or, um, large piece of paper and you feel that like you've ruined it then sometimes it can feel like a big deal whereas if it's just a little scrap of paper it doesn't matter and it, it kind of makes you give yourself permission to make mistakes nobody ever learned to do anything without making mistakes so give yourself permission to make some really ugly paintings because trust me I definitely did and still do I'm just going to fill in some gaps there. All right, I'm going to call that done. I don't want to add any more details to it. I really like how this has turned out. All right, guys, that's it. All done. I love how this one has come out. So to recap what we learned in day five, we've been looking at how to use foreshortening and perspective to create flowers from a side angle. We've also been looking at how to create a composition using multiple flowers in the same piece and just using that zigzag pattern. And then we've also looked at how to fill the space with leaves, in this case, the really frilly, delicate ones. I hope you had a lot of fun with the expressive brush strokes. I really like them. Please don't forget to share your work in the Facebook group. It's linked in the description. And come back and paint with me tomorrow for day six.